episode 54 of the fit pro podcast welcome back to the fit pro podcast listeners i am your host marvin fails and today's episode is the continuation of the wildly popular episode with maximilian burger max burger rsd max whatever you know him as he is an absolute monster in his field those of you who who don't know what rsd is Basically, Real Social Dynamics teaches you how to get confident so that you can then go out and talk to girls. You can get, then go out and live a confident life. And it's so much better, so much more than just going out to pick up chicks. It is so much more. There's so many layers. So hopefully you're learning something from this podcast. You can check everything out about Max in the show notes below. Go hit him up, follow him, like him. If you have not listened to episode 52 of this podcast, you are going to be completely lost. So make sure you go back, listen to 52. There will be a link in the description below. And uh, enjoy this episode and I will talk to you at the end. Peace. Everybody loves a success story, but I love the when you're down in the dumps and you get out of it. Has there ever been a moment for you when you've gone, oh, this is just too hard. I'm gonna go back to do what I was. I was gonna. I'm gonna go be a teacher or a scientist instead. Oh man, every day. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and and you know, to be honest, I think that was important for me. This like um, operating on the edge, operating on the edge of your comfort zone. I, I, I it's weird and it's probably very wrong, but to be honest, I need that. Like any time I felt comfortable during my early year, my early two years, every time I felt like, oh, this is chill, this is nice, I, I can relax, I felt, I felt guilty. I'm like, well, Maxwell, you're doing that, someone else is having, get, getting his, his, uh, his hands in the dirt, someone else is hustling, someone else is overcoming you, someone else will get that job. Yeah. It, it was really like that because being an RSD instructor, everybody wants to be that. Every follower of RSD... It's like, dude, I want to travel the world, get get chicks, and and you know, just get paid for YouTube videos. It sounds so easy, right? They don't see the hustle in the back. So, there's always guys who could replace you immediately, at least in the beginning. So, for me, I was always scared. I was scared all the time. My, I was <laughs> sick so much because of the the male nutrition, <laughs> the malnutrition, and stress, and, you know. <laughs> lack of sleep i was still working out like crazy i would try to go to the gym four or five times a week while lacking sleep while i was being jet lagged always in some different kind of time zone i've had a lot of lows man a lot of lows like i would freak out because the stress would be too much and pressure and the funny thing was half of that pressure came from my side yeah because because rsd said max uh we want you to launch the hot seat the max hot seat used to be a program I mean, every instructor has a hot seat, the Tyler hot seat, the Julian hot seat, the Max hot seat, and they're like, launch your Max hot seat. You have two months. And I'm like, Tyler, you had two years to create yours. He's like, don't worry about it. Just, just create it. You <laughs> just know, do just, it. Just, just, just bring it out there because it will make you money. It will help your brand. He didn't pressure me. He's like, just bring it out. You can make it better next time. You know, and I'm like, no, mine will be the best. <laughs> so guess what? Mine did, did end up becoming the most successful life program ever created with an RSD, but it came with a price because I always pushed myself. And there was so many, so many situations where I'm like, dude, just, just stop it. Just stop it. Just give up. But I, at, at the same time, I never took those seriously. I never took those thoughts seriously. For me, it was never an option. I thought about quitting, but more as some sort of fantasy, if that makes sense. I thought about quitting, like, what would it be like if you just chill at home and you're at the university apartment, tomorrow you have a couple of lectures. It was more like an entertaining thought yeah. than an actual option. For me, there was no option ever of stopping. Not at all. I would just think about the shame, uh, about like all my friends, because like my whole friend circle was RSD fans, right? And then I'm like, I was like the guy who's about to make it. So, you know, I, I pressured myself so much. There was no option of ever failing. It was an entertaining thought, but no option of ever failing. And the only... Thing that comes to my mind what was ever more than just an entertaining thought was actually the months leading up to before I got into game before I got into dating and all this stuff 
because um, I mentioned that earlier, I want to become a musician, a professional musician. That was my old dream that I always wanted to have. And uh, I was about to study music in Vienna. That was before I studied Latin and English. And I got a tendonitis. You, you probably know that as a personal yeah. trainer. It's, you know, when you're the tendons that connect your muscles with your fingers and your wrist are infected or, or, or inflamed or whatever you call it, right? It hurts. It hurts like it hurts crazy. like a bitch, yeah. And yeah, and you can't you can't move, you can't do anything, let alone play guitar. So I got that literally from one day to the other because I started practicing eight hours a day, and and then I went to a doctor and he said, oh, you can never play again. And I went to the next doctor and he said the same. I went to the next doctor and they said the same. I went to like four or five doctors on that day and they all said give up guitar playing you can never do that and you know that was all I could that was all I was good at that was all I ever wanted to do and just being that I think what really bugged me was that other people told me that I couldn't do that and I didn't want to believe it but it was true I couldn't move my hand anymore it was just like this flaming pain it's mm. horrible and, and I, you know I couldn't move my arm for months I uh, I went to like physical therapy. It was on all sorts of painkillers, pills, creams, you know, whatever the hell. And and I got so depressed. Like I've never been as depressed in my life. And I had roommates that were both guitarists as well. You know, every day I would lay in my bed crying. I would hear them play guitar, and I knew I couldn't. <laughs> and my dream was gone. Right. So take that passion somebody has. Take that away from him. Take that that goal that perspective away from somebody and what's left is just pure depression and that was that was the unhappiest i've ever been that was like the lowest bottom of of my life i've ever been at and um you know and on top of that i had no friends on top of that i had no girls on top of that i had no sex no growth no health nothing i was just this entity that would cope hour by hour you know day by day <laughs> and of course like we said earlier what did I end up typing into Google? I didn't end up typing, how can I follow my dreams? I didn't type in, how can I become more present? How can I be healthy? How can I get my life to a better level? No, I typed in how to pick up chicks, right? Because <coughs> as a 20 year old, that's the problem that surfaced. I'm like, I'm lonely. I want to have a girlfriend. I want to learn that. So I typed that in and I started reading about stuff like that. And at the same time, physical therapy for the first time started getting results mm. so so my arm started feeling better and my whole muscle was gone it was vanished like i had my hands looked like the hands of a, of a 10 year old it was crazy <laughs> and, and it was wait so crazy and and then and then it started becoming spring again and you as an australian you probably can't relate but spring means like snow is gone sun comes back out and and i was like i had i had a, a little little point of perspective again like this little light at the end of the tunnel like okay max i think your new vision is start getting back on your health start developing your arm muscles again start going out and talk to those girls start learning how you can approach that cute girl that you see on in the street that you see in the grocery store right and i started doing that and it gave me a perspective and i think a lot of the passion that i have still for my job and for teaching that came from that very passion that I felt when I recovered from that tendonitis and that, that I just felt empowered. Like, hey, just because you've been sick for all over a year and you can use your arms doesn't mean that you could get back on track. And, and, and I think that fascinated me a lot about that. And that's, that's the reason why I still do that. And yeah, that was the lowest point of my life, but it was the best learning experience of my life at the same time. And then that would be a powerful learning learning experience. And I think the listeners yeah. can take away from that is that if you listen to a lot of like the episodes of this show, actually, I ask that question to everybody. And everybody that has found success in their life or has or is on the path of success generally has a low to relate to it and make it put it in perspective of this is where you were, this is where you are now. And uh, it yeah. keeps people motivated. Well, if the only reason to not be motivated is if you're doing something right now and two years later you look back and you're doing exactly the same thing, nothing else has changed, that would demotivate the shit out of me. But if yeah. the situation has changed and it is actually proficiently better, just make it relative and look how far you've come. 
And progress is progress. Progress is always progress. It's, 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 as long as you're not dying. If you're growing, if you're not growing, you're dying. So, you know, mm. nobody wants to be in that state. Now, so that was your lowest point. What's been your highest point so far? Oh, there's been tons of high points. Like, like uh, my first free tour where I was a, my, my first official seminar as a, as a guy affiliated with RSD. That was Montreal, it was 200 people. Um, then the, the week after that was 450 people. It was on my birthday. Um, seeing Hawaii, like as an Austrian, that has always been on my bucket list, you know, going to Hawaii. And loved Hawaii. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it, you've been there too. It's beautiful, yeah, huh? And, beautiful. And it, it's funny because, you know, when I wrote that on my bucket list when I was like 15, 16, I imagined myself as like, 30 35 having a job and a family and then i'll do this trip to hawaii but i never imagined that just a couple of years later i would go there get paid right and do a seminar there and that was that was an amazing experience for me um that moment when i sat at the dinner with with tyler uh, or owen however you want to call him and nick and they said we want you to become the new instructor that was such a positive shock moment uh I didn't even tell my parents for two weeks because I just, <laughs> oh, it was real. You know, they knew I, that's all I wanted. They knew it was my dream, but I just couldn't even tell them. Um, being the first time in Vegas, uh, first video going viral, launching the, the live program, the Max Hot Seat, and most recently launching, launching The Natural and seeing it do so well because, you know, I, I created The Natural. It took me years to come up with the content, and then it took me... I would say almost half a year to write it, record it, bring it out there, create all the promotional material and so on, right? And then and then the moment where you're like, okay, it's released, hands off. And, <laughs> and you see people, you know, you, you see the, the orders coming in and you see people going crazy, writing reviews and people are like, holy shit, this is amazing. And, and you see it performing so well and outperforming everything else. I'm a very competitive person and, and just like, because... When you create it, you're so afraid. You always have that in your vision, like, what if it completely flops? Yeah. What if it, you put in all this work and people hate it? You, you know, you never know. And even though my team said it's amazing, people are going to love it, I always had that self-doubt. And, and then seeing, you know, your baby, the thing that you create, doing so extremely well is just massive. And then because I, the, the, the Natural got launched when I was in the States on tour, and then I think I had... Um, three four more weeks of touring and um one week was off so we actually rented an suv uh we drove along the west coast california uh you know all the beaches then up to san francisco the redwood forest which is where they shot star wars Amazing. <laughs> um uh, the part uh, that part with those little oh, geez what's it called ewoks uh, and Enderon and that that with the bears yeah, in the it was, jungle it was the thing. Ewoks one. Yeah. 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 Anyway. Anyways, I'm, <laughs> distracted, distracted. <laughs> We're losing so, track here. We can talk about yeah, Star Wars the whole night if you like. <laughs> yeah, awesome, awesome. And then you know, like I, I, uh, we drove all the way like through Nevada, all the way to Monument Valley and stuff like that. And that was mind blowing as well because at that point I had traveled a lot, but only to the cities to give seminars. But now I had this nature aspect in, and then. And, and I was burnt out, man. I was burnt out like crazy. Like the more I'm chilling here now in Scandinavia, the more I realized how burnt out I actually was, you know, how, how little of a human being was inside me. And it was just, just this like brand, brand, build, hustle, give seminars kind of stuff. Mm. And, then, and then I came back to Austria. That was four or five weeks later. And I was chilling for the first time. And, and for the first time ever since I started that job, I did not feel bad about chilling. Because remember earlier I said, oh, I always felt bad when I didn't work. The first time I did not. Because I'm like, the natural is out. People are watching it. The, you know, the stone is rolling. Mm -hmm. And now you're, you're chilling. And, and, and it's good. So it was really like I, w I went on a three-year marathon run. And for the first time I sat down underneath a tree and uh, looked at the stars or whatever. And, and you know, and, and you, you're building friendships with the crew that you're traveling. You know, those guys are my best friends. They're like, those are those are officially my assistants, but 
Those are the guys you share your hotel room with. You share a bed with sometimes because you're so broke you can't afford two hotel rooms. So you sleep with it, you know, like you're on one end, the other dude is on the other end. And then you call it like, you know, the dating instructor lifestyle and you share your bed with your camera guy. Or your assistant. It's just weird. <laughs> but, you know, you, you grow and, and like those guys are my, my best friends and they, they know me better than anybody else. And, you know, it, it, it's weird putting things into perspective, you know. Mm. Um, and, and being able to look back now to all these amazing experiences and, and being free and, and you know, if I want to sleep in, I sleep in. And if I, if I want to watch a movie until 6 a.m. in the morning, I do that. And, and every day now is a highlight, to be honest. But see, the, the underlying fact is you put in the work. You you yeah. had you had your foot down that whole time, and I think unless you have that mentality in you, um, you can develop it obviously. But the people that go for are the ones that go, no no no, it's not time to take my foot off yet. I haven't really done what I'm set out to do, and I like that now that you have reached one of your goals. I'm sure you've got way more. Um, you've reached one of your goals that you can now relax because you obviously deserve it, man. You've been around the world three times. You're obviously helping hundreds, if not thousands of people uh, become more confident, get uh, a lot more life skills to, for one, like it's not just picking up chicks, as well as like your personal development, your health, your dating, your freedom, everything else that comes with that. It's a lot of fucking work. It is a lot of work and you should obviously be proud of what you've done. Uh, and you're right. Sometimes you just need to sit down Look at what's happened. Look at make make it make it relative. See where you've been, and see where you are mm. now, and uh, just enjoy it, man. And uh, yeah. I, I think yeah, people don't do that enough, but they also do it too too much. A lot of people do it too much True. when they accomplish nothing. <laughs> um, so. Like like I I said, um, I always say there's so many people who don't give a fuck, mm. and that's cool. You know, there's like oh yeah, this guy's cool. He doesn't care. But I always say. You gotta deserve not giving a fuck. Exactly. Deserve that first. Now I'm sitting at home, chilling, and you know, if somebody's mad at me, if something doesn't go 100% like I wanted to, I'm like, okay, I don't care. <laughs> But I had to deserve that through years of grinding first. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You gotta be, you, you, the rest has gotta be deserved. And I yeah. mean, my this this podcast is still very much in its infant phase even though we're up to episode 50 now and it's been a grind it's been a long it's been a long six months not right. five months this is five months of content uh, of consistently three times a week it's just putting stuff out and uh, only myself my girlfriend thinks i'm surely thinks i'm mad because i'm doing a lot of stuff without getting anything back in return at the moment and ultimately i know where it's going to lead i know the goals that i have and generally it's just you you're the only one that knows where you can take this yeah whatever you're doing you're the only one that knows how big it can be um so obviously just stick to your stick to your hustle and keep doing it you've done a lot of shit man you you have done a lot of shit but what is next for you oh that people ask me that a lot now not the natural is out and um <laughs> you know, let, let me oh, just well. fucking chill jesus yeah <laughs> no i love it uh, for for this year for the end of this year Uh, I'll keep putting out content, growing, 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 growing. Um, so I used to uh, publish one video per week. Now I publish multiple per week, multiples per week. Yep. And um, so I'm uh, focusing a lot more on growing, going a little bit more into the mainstream kind of stuff, while at the same time keeping it up with the with the hardcore content, the dense content. Uh, then in March, I have another product coming out. Looking forward to that. So obviously, that has to be created, written. Um, people hired. Then I have a little tour coming up in February. Just a little tour, because right now, really, touring is the last thing I'm looking forward to. <laughs> um, so I have a little tour, I think three or four weeks, uh, London, New York, Miami. And um, then I'll see. Then I'll see what uh, what's what's in for me for the rest of the year. And long term, I, I definitely want to keep doing this for a long time. I might, you know, I might switch more and more from dating to more um, health related stuff to more personal development related stuff you know as, as I am maturing 
uh, maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> and uh, at the same time, you know, it's starting to invest the money, getting more into finances. For until now, I never had the need to get into finances because I didn't have any. Uh, but now, obviously, <laughs> you know, the more money you make, you all, you want to make sure that you keep making money, that you don't lose it. So I'm probably going to start to invest in real estate at some point. But obviously, before I'll do that. I want to read myself into that a lot and it's cool because I'm in a lucky enough position similar to you where you don't just accumulate knowledge for yourself but it's helping you because through your medium, through your podcast, through your YouTube channel, whatever it is, you can actually recycle that content again and give it, pass it on to people. So you're not only growing your knowledge, you're also growing your channel. Yeah. Through that knowledge that you're that you're accumulating, so I'm in a lucky position because now I can justify it twice as much when I'm staying in reading a book because it doesn't only help me but also my channel. And uh, one one thing about growing stuff and growing channels, I, I was having a look at your YouTube earlier and I wrote down some numbers. I mean, you joined YouTube on uh, March 28, 2014. I can see that for a fact. And awesome. Uh, your subscribers at the moment is 74,597. That is amazing for two years on YouTube. People don't, yeah, real, thank you. <laughs> people don't realize how long it takes to grow a YouTube subscriber base, especially, yeah. like, especially now. Back in the day when, say, five years ago, it wasn't easy, but it was a lot easier than it is now uh, because everybody has access to it now and everybody's got a channel. Sure. What is some tips for you, uh, well, for, for the listeners, uh, on growing their social media, different platforms? What is like your one golden nugget of how to grow a following? Oh, geez. If it had come down to one, yeah. um, I got to keep it broad. I say give value. That's all. Like, that's the business, um, that's the business uh, uh, plan of RSD. That's what I've been doing, and it's just give, 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 give. Like my, ever since I started in March 2014, I didn't ask for anything for a very, very long time. All I did was content, you know, because I could have said, hey, <clears throat> if you want to watch the infield footage, then uh, buy the program, right? Yeah. But I was like, no, I'm going to have it all out on my YouTube channel for a very, very long time. So before you even dare thinking of, of asking for money, ask for anything, give for free, give for free, give for free, until the very first person says, hey, uh, let me give you money. <laughs> like literally <laughs> until then. Like, a book that I could recommend about that is Gary Vaynerchuk, The Thank You Economy. Yep. <clears throat> That's how things work nowadays. People give out shit for free so much until people want to give you money just, just to say thank you. So many people who bought my product, I mean, I would say a, a great majority of them bought it because the product is good. But a lot of people bought it because the product is good and they wanted to support me, right? They said like, dude, for two years now, I've watched all your stuff. You've helped me so much. Now you have a product out. Let me buy it, right? And, and it's really like that. doesn't matter whether you're not you're on Instagram or YouTube or Snapchat or Facebook. Give, 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 give. Don't ask for anything until people start asking you if they can do something for you. Give, give, give like crazy. And that's my one golden nugget. It's very generalized. I know if you want to have something more uh, specific, I would say, because people always ask, Max, is it more important about quality or quantity of the content? And as funny as it sounds, I would say both. Mm -hmm. Try to post on a very regular basis, right? Because there's always certain times where people are sitting down and they want to watch your content. That's usually every day when people come home from work, when they're sitting down with dinner or when they're getting up with breakfast. They're sitting down and I'm like, oh, I, I want to watch a Max video while I'm eating my Fruit Loops. Now, if you don't have a video up, they're like, well, I'm eating my Fruit Loops. I want to watch something. What are they doing? They go to your competition. They're like, well, if Max doesn't have a new video up, I'll go watch that guy, yeah. right? And then they're like, hey, this guy's actually cool. Let me follow him as well. And boom, now you create a competition for yourself. But if you always have a video up, they're like, okay, cool, Max has a new video, Max has a new video, Max has a new video. That way, they don't divert to the competition unless you don't have the ability to come up with quality content all the time and you end up creating too much filler content 
that's where you lose it all because now the people are like new max video but it sucks just like the last one just like the last one and that's where they stay with the competition forever so it's really difficult to always come up with things and keep them high quality like give your best give your freaking best if you don't have a lot of time to edit squeeze out as much as you can be grateful and give them always the top-notch content it's really as easy as that give them the top-notch content nothing is good enough but put it out anyway and try to be as as frequent as possible with it yeah content is absolutely king you really just have to put out good content consistently uh so that people know you're fucking reliable (laughs) <laughs> yeah, You're, exactly. they can rely on you for decent content and the thank you economy is a great book uh, I, I definitely advise everybody to read it as well as most of Gary Vee's books like Jab 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 Right Hook was a Christmas present of mine two years ago oh, uh, nice. I, I get I get books for Christmas that's where I'm at in my life I love, um, it. <laughs> I love it I get books and I, get, I don't even read books now I'm, a, I'm an audio guy I do a podcast and uh, I listen to podcasts that's all I do uh, but man Look, thank you for coming on today, Max. We've been doing this for an hour. Well, way more than an hour. Uh, An hour and uh, 15 minutes of free content for your ass. Uh, But that's all we've been doing, guys. This is, again, this is not simple to do. It's not simple to have a conversation for an hour and a half. But this is is an example of what uh, Max was just talking about. They're, they're creating that quality content, getting those quality guests on so that people can relate to it. And complete, this is probably one of the more different uh, interviews we've done uh, with a different type of guest. Because you, you didn't come from a fitness background. You didn't do any of that. But the principles are the same uh, yes, across right. the board. So Max, do you have any parting words for the listeners? Well, I want to thank you, Marvin, for having me on the show. I want to thank the listeners for if for for uh, uh, hanging in there for the one hour long rant here. <laughs> um, I, I I don't know. I would always say, dude, I, I'm neither particularly smart. I'm neither particularly gifted in anything. Yet, I created a life for myself where I seriously go to bed every freaking day, and I'm grateful. I can I can buy shit that I buy for money that I don't need because I would do it for free and it, it feels amazing like I'm eternally grateful for my life if if a meteoroid would hit me now and I would die this very second I would die a very happy man and again <laughs> bear in mind I'm not particularly smart not particularly blessed not born in a rich family but hell I can live a life that is for me personally worth living thousands of times so you can do that too it doesn't matter if you're 30 35 40 50 18, 16, in high school, I don't care. You can make this life your dream life. It's possible. Perfect, man. And thank you for coming on again, dude. Uh, we will definitely have to do it again, maybe when your next program comes out. But how, Anytime, man. Anytime. How, how can the listeners find you? Uh, you can uh, check me out on YouTube. I would say YouTube is my biggest following. I've put in, I'm putting uh, multiple videos per week up there. It's RSD Max, Real Social Dynamics, RSD Max on YouTube, RSD Max on Facebook. That's more personal stuff. RSD Max on Snapchat. That's very personal stuff. I'm Snapchatting like crazy recently. RSD Max on Instagram. On Instagram, I have a lot of motivational posts. You also see summary videos of what I did this week, you know, hanging out with girls, traveling, partying, working hard, working out, um, and RSD Max on Twitter. No, it's actually RSD Maximilian on Twitter, but you'll find it. You can check it out. It's basically the same on all the social media platforms. Perfect, dude. Um, look, I've been doing this for a while now. I still don't know how to end these fucking podcasts. Um, <laughs> I don't know how to sign them out. and just sort of just fade into the darkness, but how do you sign out your videos and we'll use that? Uh, I think I always say the same words. I'm like, thanks so much for watching. Peace. And then I walk out of the picture. <laughs> <laughs> you just you just stole my shit. If you listen to any of my podcasts, that's our end number. It's like, <laughs> thanks for listening. Peace. <laughs> love it, love it. That being said, we are done. And uh, yeah, guys, peace.
So that was episode 54 with Max Berger. What do you think? Do you want to hear more? Make sure you head to fitpropodcast.com to check it out. Check out the show notes so you can link up with Max if you want to know more about his program, The Natural. Um, he had a massive sale for Black Friday. I know it's not even on anymore, but it's still an amazing value, still amazing bargain. Go check that out. Um, next episode is going to be a uh, summary episode as always. And guys, I just wanted to mention it again purely because I am passionate about it and I would love to your feedback as well. I love Audible. Okay, I love 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 audible i use it every single day when i'm not listening to podcasts i'm on an audible audiobook that is just what i do that is my day to day and i know a lot of you can relate to that and if you can't you need to get with it you need to get with it because the new way to read books read books by listening to books it's proven that some people learn better when they are listening versus reading off a page so if you want to learn better you want to learn more make sure you head to audibletrial.com forward slash fit pro podcast there's a link in the show notes below and today's podcast was brought to you by audible.com if you go to that link you'll get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial if you don't like it after that you get to keep the book for free you don't have to continue anything you can just leave go do whatever the hell you want to do but Make sure you try it because you're going to like it. You can fast forward, you can speed it up, you can slow it down, whatever you're into. Guys, I need a new book. Let me know on Twitter at FitPro Podcast. What book should I get? And uh, yeah, that is all we have time for today. I'm out. This is the FitPro Podcast. If you love the show, make sure you rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes at FitPro Podcast. Peace. <laughs>